Welcome back, friends. Lost Guy here, and it's time for the third episode of the Kirby Dreamcast. This podcast is where we're going to talk about nothing but Kirby. We're going to talk about Kirby right back at your show. Talk about every single game, go in depth on those things. Talk about Sakurai, other people at Nintendo responsible for the creation of Kirby, and the ongoing greatness of Kirby as we go forward with the episodes. But the big through line is... We'll be talking about Kirby right back at you, which is the anime, made in Japan like 2001, 2000, 2003, and came to the U.S. a year later through 4Kids. 4Kids gets a pretty bad reputation with a lot of things, but because this is just straight up a kid's show, not too much that needs to be censored, it actually is pretty good. A very good show done by 4Kids. And so, we'll be talking about special episodes with the games here and there, but for the most part, we're going to go over this show because it's a 100 episode show, so it'll give us some regularity, and because it's a fun show to talk about. Today's episode we're going to talk about is Kirby's Right Back at You, Episode 3, Kirby's Dual Role. Not going to tell you the Japanese title just yet because that kind of gives it all away. But this episode starts out with Kirby sleeping in Takori's nest. Now the reason for that is, last episode, if you missed in Episode 2, everyone came together to build Kirby a house next to a tree, but Takori the bird took Kirby's house. And Kirby, because he's this little guy who just rolls with anything and just makes lemonade out of lemons every time, Kirby just lives in the tree. He took residence in the tree and it's just been that way. So you get to see a really cute shot of Kirby sleeping in a, in a nest. And it's really weird how Takori and Kirby become friends. I've said this before. Takori's an ornery, like, redneck bird who's really mean to Kirby. But because Kirby's just a really friendly guy who's friends with everybody, he eventually just warms up on Takori and they become friends. To the point that I said last time, uh, Takori is the only person who really understands Kirby's Puyo speak. That is very interesting. But, so, this is where we're starting out. Kirby's in a tree... And he's just very cute, and his house is right below him, but he doesn't live there. Takori the bird does. And so, at the start of the episode, Tiff and Tuff show up at the house. They start knocking on the door, and they wake up Takori. And now I gotta mention the music, because I really, really, really like the music in 4Kids. 4Kids, what they did is, they got rid of all of the sound effects and music from the Japanese version and made their own version. I don't know why they did this, but I'm happy they did, because in the Japanese version, like, not knocking the anim- the original, because it's... It's pretty good, but it's a different beast because of the different choices both made. But in the Japanese original, the music is very passive. It's a very passive character. It's just there for like... I'll use the jump rope scene from last episode as an example. And that is, the music's very passive, it's very happy and chipper during the jump rope scene. But for the 4Kids version of it, there's a musical beat when Kirby takes the jump rope to the face, a musical beat when he lands, and a musical beat for when he turns around and reacts to getting hit in the face. Those musical beats enhance the episode, enhance that scene so much, it makes the music an active character in the story. That's what it does. It makes it an active character instead of a passive character, and I feel like it enhances the show greatly. So, musically, I love what 4Kids did here. I really like it a lot. And there's other things they do, like I mentioned before. When it comes to Takori, when he wakes up, and any, any, a lot of other scenes with Takori, a fiddle plays. And that's very much considered like a redneck kind of thing from the South. And so the fiddle plays whenever Takori does major stuff or when he shows up, and just works very well for him. It just tells you who this character is. When Midnight shows up, you get the Spanish guitar, which is a funny choice, but it is also a choice the Japanese did as well. And I think that might be where they took it from, because the Japanese did the Spanish guitar with Meta Knight the first time. They took that and have done things with that idea. Like, I feel like they improved on it, which is pretty cool. And Kirby, of course, gets the horns. He gets a, he gets basically a big band and trumpets and everything whenever Kirby does triumphant stuff. And when combat happens, he just gets a big band feel to Kirby, which I like a lot about it. And other characters get nice touches as well. And it's just cool. I like it a lot. The music's great, and I will stop talking about that for a moment and get back to the episode. So Tiff and Tuff wake up to Cory, he wakes up and he yells at them, and I guess somehow Tiff and Tuff forgot that Kirby lost his house, or that they just thought it would be for that one night. Because to Cory's there, it surprised him, he's like, look, me and Kirby traded. It's like, I don't think you actively traded, I think you just took the house and Kirby just ran with it to Cory. But that's what he does. And to Cory yells at them to leave, and the way he says it, I really like this line, I wish I had an opportunity to use it, but it'd be weird, and here it is. Whatever you're selling, I ain't buying it, so put an egg in your shoe and beat it. I just like that joke. It's a dumb joke. He does a lot of bird puns. I like it. This show, here's the thing that works with Kirby right back at you. This is a show for dads. Because there's so many dad jokes in here, so many dad puns in here, that they would enjoy watching the show with their kid. That's how I feel about it. This is just breeding that kind of feel. So, they're looking for Kirby, and they're like, oh, he's up in the tree. Well, they can't fly up there. So, Takori flies up there to get the Kirby, and he pokes Kirby right in the belly. Like, right in his tumbly. And it, it, it obviously looks like it hurts Kirby. Kirby wakes up and falls out of the tree from, with surprise and hits the ground and then rolls over. And the music plays with each beat of them. Music plays at the, at the poke. They play at him hitting the ground. And then there's a snare when he rolls over. 
and looks so good. It feels so good. It's just done so well. I know it's all comedy. Like, the idea is Kirby taking all this pain for Prattfall comedy, but he takes so much hits. It's just so mean what Takori does to him. He takes, takes so much. But because Kirby is as powerful as he is, it's okay, I guess. So Tiff and Tuff are there, and they're telling Kirby that they need to tell him something bad is coming. And as they're about to explain the situation, Mr. Melman the Mailman shows up. I love these names. So he's an old-looking cappy with long, puffy eyebrows and a beard with a mailman hat and a satchel, and he delivers a letter from Meta Knight to Kirby. One thing real quick about Melman the Mailman, he will be around in random episodes because he's the mailman, and they have some random mail jokes with him, but something about him is he's going to get a special one or two episodes about him. And because the show goes for 100 episodes, almost everybody gets a special episode about them, just so they explore different characters, and they're all very fun stories, and I remember his, and it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty dang good. But back to the episode. Mailman the Mailman delivers a letter, and Kirby can't read, so Tiff takes it and reads it out for Kirby. Med Knight is challenging Kirby to a duel. Kirby at first is very happy about this, but then Tuff explains it's a bad thing, much to Kirby's confusion. He's like, Kirby just gets really happy, and he's like, huh? I, my assumption here is... Kirby just heard Meta Knight, and he's like, oh, cool, Meta Knight, all right, that's cool. Not realizing that this is a bad thing. <laughs> so, something I should talk about is the mental state of Kirby. This will be explained more in episode four, but I'll explain it a little bit right now, just because it's going to be important for this episode as well, is Kirby's mental state. And that is, Kirby is basically a baby to a small child right now. It's revealed in episode four, and I'll say it again then, is that Kirby actually woke up 200 years too early. Kirby was supposed to be maturing in, in like, sleep, in his little spaceship for 200 more years until he would become an adult and then he'd be the great star warrior he's supposed to be. Instead, Kirby woke up early and he's still got to become the great star warrior he's got to be, but he's basically a baby or a small child because he's very underdeveloped. The only reason why Kirby is able to do what he's doing is because Kirby has great combat instincts and because Kirby's body is just so tough. He can handle a lot of punishment and he also just knows how to fight by instinct. And that's going to be very important in this episode because holy crap, Meta Knight does not hold back all that much. He does hold back still, because he's not trying to kill Kirby, but he does not hold back a lot when they have their duel. Because straight up, they're going to have a duel, and that is the name of the Japanese version of the episode. That is a duel with Meta Knight. And yeah, that would just give it all away right then and there. Now, when it comes to the video games, Kirby's age is sort of mentioned, sort of, and also Kirby does talk a little bit in some of the games as well. But whether or not that's canon or not is something that's always been argued and up to debate. Because Kirby's described as a young boy in the first couple games, and yeah, he's a little kid, yeah. But in the later games, Kirby dis gets described as a joyful fellow. Uh, not joyful, as a jolly fellow. So, jolly fellow, that could mean anything, really. But so people interpret it as, Kirby is somewhere between a child to a young adult somewhere in there. And people who have dived pretty deep on that, and just different mental states and things. Things that kids wouldn't really have as, as attitudes and reactions of things, and adults more would have and stuff like that, to just try to gauge Kirby's age, and they wrench. And it's more, Kirby's just somewhere in between, like, adolescence and adulthood. Somewhere in there, uh, Kirby's just a really jolly little guy, just saves the world and the universe a bajillion times as this jolly little fellow. After that point, when Kirby finds out about the duel, the opening happens, and you know me, I love that opener, it's still good. And then they cut to Takori telling the village about the duel. The villagers don't understand why Meta Knight would challenge Kirby. They're like, what? Why would he challenge Kirby? He's like, Kirby's a nice little guy, Meta Knight's their, their really cool, honorable knight. Why would he want to fight Kirby? But that's what's going to happen. And then it's over to Kabu Canyon, where the duel is to be held. So Tiff and Tuff are explaining why they came to see Kirby, and that's that they saw King Dedede himself order Meta Knight to duel Kirby. Now, at first, Meta Knight protested, saying, why don't they summon a monster instead? And King Dedede is like, what are you talking about? I don't summon monsters. What do you mean? And this is interesting. I thought it was public knowledge that King Dedede summons monsters, but apparently, he actually is trying to hide that fact. Which is very weird. The Japanese version, it's more of, they're like, it's, they're like, it's an open secret. They're like, no one's supposed to know that. Why are you saying that? But it's so obvious. It's just weird. So they order Midnight to fight or be charged as a traitor. So Midnight just, he's like, all right, I guess I'll go duel. And that's what happens there. The Japanese version also, they ask if Midnight is related to Kirby. And they do have the same size and shape. But he does say no. And who knows? Maybe they are. Now, Tuff tells Kirby he should run and hide, but Meta Knight shows up and cue the Spanish guitar. Meta Knight asks why would they bring Kirby to the duel if they want him to hide, and Tiff and Tuff say they want to talk to Meta Knight and convince him not to fight Kirby. He's helped them so many times before in the past, why would they attack Kirby now? Meta Knight says he's under orders, and as a knight, he can't say no. Tiff and Tuff protest, but are blocked by Sword Knight and Blade Knight, and then the battle begins. But before we get to that, I should tell you about the three knights. 
Med Knight, Sword Knight, and Blade Knight are all enemies from Kirby in the games. They all started up in Kirby's Adventure, where Blade and Sword Knight can be swallowed and be turned into Sword Kirby ability. Med Knight in this game, of course, is a boss character. He's always been a boss. He's one of the longest running antagonists in the games, second only to King Dedede and Krakow, who were both bosses in the first game, which is, of course, Kirby's Dreamland. Now, we'll see Krakow in the future, so I'll talk about them then. But in the show, all three knights are voiced by Eric Stewart. You might recognize him from... Oh, oh wow. He's from the 4Kids era a lot. He was Seto Kaiba in Yu-Gi-Oh! He's Brock and James in Pokemon. And he's Koenma in Yu Yu Hakusho. So, that's not 4Kids, but still, he's Koenma. That's pretty cool. And I get why he does a Spanish accent for Midnight. If you wanted Kirby to escape, why did you come here? Because they did use the Spanish guitar in the Japanese version. I have no idea why the other two knights are English accents. This is why I said a king. We're looking for a bloke named Kirby. One is very cockney, one is very not. But that's what he do. And in the Smash Brothers games, it's Med Knight is actually not voiced by Eric Stewart. He's actually voiced by a different Eric named Eric Newsom. Eric Newsom has done only a few voices, mostly Nintendo games. He was Bowser in Super Paper Mario and random voices in Strider, if you've played that game. But the three knights are there. Sword Knight and Blade Knight block Tiff and Tough so that Med Knight can just one-on-one -on -one Kirby without interruption. And the duel starts. Med Knight pulls out his sword, which is known as the Galaxia. And it's a pretty cool looking sword. It comes out as just a mess of lightning that eventually solidifies into a sword. And he runs up at Kirby and beats the ever-loving crap out of Kirby. It is the first baby beating of the episode, and it lasts... Th okay, the Midnight Duel lasts six and a half minutes to seven minutes long. And about two or three minutes of that is just Kirby getting beat up a lot. <laughs> Holy crap, he gets... He just gets beaten up a bunch in this episode. But luckily for Kirby, Med Knight is only using the side of his sword for the entire fight. Well, the majority of the fight, Med Knight only uses the side of his sword to just beat the crap out of Kirby, not slice him in half, thankfully. But as the fight goes on, Tiff and Tuff tell Kirby to suck up Med Knight, but it doesn't work. Kirby tries to suck Med Knight as hard as he can, but Med Knight just doesn't move, and just Kirby just fails in his struggle, and it's just it's unfortunate for Kirby. Med Knight then tells them that Kirby can't suck up big or heavy enemies, but the kids are like, wait, you're neither of those things, and Med Knight informs them he has other ways. Which never gets explained, by the way, but I assume he means he's got a heavy spirit or he's just wearing heavy armor or something. King Dedede and Escargoon are also watching the fight from a distance, by the way, and they're not sure if Kirby's winning or if Med Knight's winning, until, well, of course, Med Knight beats the crap out of Kirby some more. Still, the kids protest that Kirby can't defend himself, so Med Knight has Sword Knight throw a sword into the field. The kids tell Kirby to run, but the boy takes the sword. Now this is a nice detail to have in the show because in every boss battle with Meta Knight, it always starts with a sword in the ground so the player has the option to fight Meta Knight as Sword Kirby. Like, there's just always a sword right there, you can pick it up or fight with your current ability. In the newest one of Kirby Star Allies, the sword's there as usual, but you can actually fly up to Meta Knight and he's like, what the hell? And he'll just start the fight right then and there. Just a nice little detail. So Kirby has some trouble getting the sword, it's not his iconic sword, it's big and heavy, and Kirby has trouble wielding it, but eventually Kirby does get a grasp of it, and Med Knight starts the attack. Kirby is able to defend himself with a sword, but still the poor baby gets beat up over and over and over again. Eventually Kirby is able to parry Med Knight's attacks, and Med Knight starts spouting off advice while attacking Kirby, and he's able to dodge and block more attacks. Kirby is improving, but still getting beat up with the flat end of Med Knight's sword. Eventually Med Knight just batters Kirby and slams him into a wall, and a bunch of rocks land on Kirby. Escargoon makes potentially the best joke by singing, Kirby loses by a landslide, and King Dedede decides it's time to leave and summon a sword fighting monster to finish off Kirby. Kirby gets back up and Med Knight says a true warrior would stand and fight, while Tiff and Tuff tell him to leave. Kirby, however, rushes back into battle and the duel continues. Kirby improves and fights even better against Meta Knight to the point that Tuff thinks he has a chance, but Tiff thinks Meta Knight is just going easy on Kirby, but she's not sure why. Meta Knight tells Kirby he's too short to reach him, but that there's a way to deal with bigger opponents. By the way, too short to reach Med Knight is hilarious, considering how small that guy is. Now, the next thing Med Knight does is something I enjoy, and, and I really like the dub line for this, and that is, the steel of my sword is hard, but the steel of my spirit makes it harder. He then jumps up and does a sword beam at Kirby. Kirby barely dodges it and is in awe, because it just destroys a bunch of land. And then he does another one, and then Kirby dodges that one too. And Med Knight explains that one can shoot their power through their sword if they have the focus to do it. He then tells Kirby to try or be beaten. So Kirby does something very interesting. Kirby falls asleep in the middle of combat. 
Which, of course, Minnow's like, what the? Tiff and Tuff call out to Kirby while he's sleeping, and we see a big boulder next to them, which is going to be important in a second. Midnight realizes this is how Kirby relaxes to focus and goes on the attack. He's rushing to basically attack Kirby again while he's sleeping, and right when he's about to go for the strike, Kirby wakes up. But before anything can happen, a boulder falls from the sky to interrupt the duel. Midnight sees the boulder just in time and pushes Kirby out of the way. But Kirby's knocked unconscious by the landing, and Tiff and Tuff pick up Kirby and pull him out of the area while the dust is settling. And Midnight just doesn't see where they are. He's not sure where they are, and he needs to go find them. Now, something I need to mention here is the difference between the Japanese version and the 4Kids version, in that Sakurai had two rules when they were making the show. He told them these are the two things. You can have no humans in the show, and Kirby can't talk. As we know, the pilot kind of broke that rule where Kirby does talk a little bit, but after the first episode, they start using Poyo instead, so Kirby only says Poyo. But in the Japanese version, they went a little bit further again. In the Japanese version, Kirby mouths out and actually says Sword Beam. Or, of course, in Japanese, Sword Beamu. In the American version, Kirby still only says Poyo. Kirby will never say any of his attacks. Well, in the Japanese version, whenever Kirby uses a special attack, they will say Sword Beam. Or whatever other move they're doing, they'll actually say it in Japanese. While the 4Kids version does not do that. That is interesting to see that the Japanese didn't follow the rule while 4Kids did. That, that just surprised me, and it's just an interesting thing to tell you. So cut to King Dedede and Escargoon hurrying back to the castle, and Escargoon falls out of the tank and says, I'm okay. I think it's a funny touch that they didn't just go back, they actually had a gag there when they're coming back, just to give you a little bit more laughs. And King Dedede rushes to his chair and summons a sword fighting monster, and we get Bugsy. Here's an interesting thing. Bugsy's not a sword fighting monster in the games, it's very weird, but... He's got a sword and a club in this one. Those who play the games, of course, know Bugsy is a backdrop suplex power enemy who catches foes in his pincers and throws them around or slams them to the ground. But not in the cartoon. That's, that's just weird. Now, you might recognize him. He's a big purple stag beetle that Kirby has fought since Kirby's Adventure, another enemy from that game as well. The knights are searching for Kirby, and Tiff and Tuff hear them talking. Kirby was close to learning the sword beam, and Med Knight is worried that a sword fighting monster is probably on the way and that they need to teach Kirby to sword beam before it's too late. This, of course, confuses Tiff and Tuff because he just beat up Kirby, but he was trying to help? They realize they're near Kaboo, and that Midnight must have met with Kaboo, so they question Kaboo. And Kaboo reveals that they were talking about the fate of the world. They ask Kaboo to explain, and so Kaboo is the god of exposition in this show, and he does more expositioning. Kaboo tells Tiff and Tuff about Enemy, that he's this big evil mastermind that makes monsters and sells them the kingdoms. By doing so, he has monsters everywhere to help him take over everything. He wants everything in his grasp. But one time, Enemy messed up in his creation of a monster, and that creature that he made will not follow his orders. And they show you this little ball with a sword. That's what they show you uh, visually. On a chessboard, it's Enemy putting his chess pieces on a board, and one piece is a little ball, and you don't know what it is, and it has a sword up at him. And they're like, huh, okay. And Enemy is concerned that this one creature could lead to his downfall, and Tiff and Tuff surmise that this must be Kirby, and Kaboo responds with, That is the likely explanation. Visually, because they show a ball with a sword, you think it might be Kirby, because the sword does look like Kirby's sword, actually, when they show it. And Kirby does become Sword Kirby. But there's another sword-wielding orb in this show. And the way Kaboo responds makes me think it's Meta Knight. That Meta Knight is the creature created by Enemy, not Kirby, but we'll eventually have to see who it is, and let me know who you guess it is. Is it Kirby or is it Midnight? I'm not sure. It could be either one, considering Enemy's been making monsters this whole time, but he's been making monsters before Midnight even showed up, so it's possible he did make Midnight, or it's possible he made Kirby, and I guess they took Kirby and set him up in the starship. Who knows? There's plenty of theory that can go on there, and I'm sure the show will explain which one it is eventually, because why wouldn't they? But that's where it is right now. So Tiff and Tuff had to leave, but they ask as they're going... Who told Kaboo all this? And Kaboo reveals Midnight told him a long time ago, which shocks the two of them. Everything Kaboo knows about Enemy and everything is from Meta Knight. And of course, Midnight knows all this stuff because Midnight is a Star Warrior. That also gets explained in episode 4. A lot of exposition in episode 4 about who Midnight is and about Kirby and everything like that is going to happen in the next episode. Now, there's a small scene with King Dedede and Escargoon and Bugsy after this point as they're heading out to find Kirby, and they make a bug joke, and that's Kirby's been bugging us, and now we're going to bug him. Bugsy then groans. That's the only way Bugsy talks is through groans. But I feel like Bugsy was actually groaning that time. Like, he's like, ugh. <laughs> it's, oh my god. Who wouldn't groan at that? So, Tiff and Tuff and Fala and Folo are hiding Kirby in a hidden spot. 
And they're just trying to move him around to make sure King Didi doesn't find him, which I'm surprised King Didi does find him so quickly. But the way they do it when they, they grab Kirby and they're trying to sneak away in the dark and King DDD turns on the lights of his tank. And again, 4Kid just makes too many good, bad jokes. And that is uh, King DDD says, now you're in the spotlight. He's like, oh my God, so many jokes. This is, I can't wait for a ghost episode because I can't wait for them to say Kirby doesn't have a ghost of a chance like 27 times. Honestly, they're going to say it too many times, but I enjoy it so much. So the kids run away and they get chased, but they trip and drop Kirby who gets hit by the tank. Kirby doesn't have a good day. He gets hit straight up by the tank and it just bounces him off of him and it wakes Kirby up and he sees Bugsy and he's kind of a huge bug. Bugsy attacks Kirby with a club and sword and all Kirby can do is desperately dodge. He's got no weapons. It's just Kirby. And he just keeps dodging and dodging and dodging some more. Then Man Knight shows up and feigns ignorance. He's like asking, whoa, what's there a monster doing here? Wasn't I supposed to defeat Kirby? And they tell Men Knight thanks because they didn't want him to beat Kirby. They wanted a monster of their summoning to beat Kirby, which I guess they're back to not keeping it a secret. Now, what I like about this scene is Men Knight, the voice acting going on here, the tone of his voice signif is significantly different to show that he's faking. So, you are only using me to find the right monster to order. It's very obvious to the audience, but not to the characters. I just like that. I like that he's doing a different voice, not just having the same straight voice the whole time. So Kirby keeps dodging and eventually tries to suck up Bugsy, but fails as per usual because he's just too dang big. Man Knight tells him that Bugsy's too big, which it's gotta be too damn obvious to everyone. But Tiff realizes, okay, yeah, he's too big, so suck up the sword. Now, what's interesting is when Kirby goes for the suck on the sword, Man Knight throws his sword and hits the sword out of Bugsy's hands, and somehow nobody notices that. And this leads to Kirby sucking up the sword, and he becomes Sword Kirby, which distresses King Dedede and Escargoon, because of course it does. What I like about this scene right here, though, is when Kirby gets the sword for the first time, is they show Kirby warming up, because he's been getting wrecked all episode, and now it's his turn to do some damage. Midnight explains that if Kirby has learned the sword beam, then he'll be a master swordsman. And Bugsy responds by making two long swords. He gets rid of his club and makes two big long swords. So what Kirby does? He makes his sword longer. Way longer! Sword get longer! And so the battle begins anew. By the way, Kirby has the ability to make a sword long, which means he doesn't necessarily need the sword beam to fight Med Knight, because, well, he has reach now with that. But I actually don't know if Kirby does this longer sword thing in any other episodes, because I don't remember that many episodes right now. Uh, he does use the sword beam a lot, but I don't know if he makes a longer sword. So they have a cool little sword fight reach, make progress on the other, but eventually Kirby is put on the defensive. So Kirby goes to sleep in the middle of the fight to focus. As Bugsy is about to go for the finishing blow, Kirby wakes up and jumps into the sky and charges up his sword beam. Like I said, in Japanese version, Kirby yells out sword beam, while in this version, Kirby just doesn't say anything and shoots out the sword beam. Bugsy stops his attack and then tries to block it with his two swords, but the beam goes through the swords and cuts Bugsy in freaking half. Bugsy gets cut in half, and it's a little slow about it too. But there's no blood, not in the Japanese version either. And then Bugsy explodes. And then the village was apparently there during the whole fight, and they're cheering for Kirby as he wins the fight. So Kirby has an audience for the win. And of course, King DDD is not very happy about this, so he decides, okay, he'll take on Kirby himself, but Midnight blocks the way, saying Kirby's too powerful to fight. King DDD protests, but Midnight kicks the tank and it rolls back down the mountain. A funny thing there is they're yelling about falling back down the mountain, and King DDD's yelling at Escargoon to do something bad, and Escargoon's like, what do you want me to do? And he says, break my fall! So Tiff and Tuff question Midnight as to who he's trying to protect, Kirby or King DDD? Man Knight says he's a loyal subject to the king, with the same lying tone. The kids say they learned about Nightmare Enterprises from Kabu, but Med Knight could tell them a lot more. Hints that he may then tell them eventually, but not just yet. Tiff resolves to learn more about Kirby one way or another. Then we get a really cute closure of Kirby being uh, carried into the sky by Falalo and Falala. So this episode has a couple standout things. One is, Kirby only got beaten once. But it was like one-third of the episode by midnight. Like, a third of the entire episode is just Kirby getting beaten up. He did get hurt by Takori and King Dedede, but they weren't full-on beatings, so we're not counting those. There's, there's one other standout, and that is the monster itself never hurt Kirby. Kirby dodges a lot, Kirby blocks a lot, but at no point does Kirby get hit by the monster. That is so odd. It's also the first episode that doesn't have Tiff and Tuff's parents, Sir Ibram and Lady Light. Now, I enjoyed this episode a lot because, well, it was Midnight versus Kirby. I don't know if they have another duel later in the show where Kirby has to prove himself some more, but if they do, I'm looking forward to that. Interestingly, though, they did change some of the dialogue of this fight, and they cut some of the fight up because in the Japanese version, 
it's a little more brutal. Midnight actually beats up Kirby even more, and he's very much more aggressive about teaching Kirby in the Japanese version. While the 4Kids version was a little bit softer about it, not much, because Kirby still gets the crap beat out of him a lot in it, but the way Midnight describes his teaching Kirby is not as strict as the Japanese way of doing it. There are scenes where Tiff straight up curses. There's one where Tiff says, damn it, Kirby, and she says that quite a few times. It's kind of like a catchphrase for her, where she says, damn it, Kirby. Well, the 4Kids version, of course, doesn't have that. There's just an interesting difference is that there's cursing the Japanese version. Anything else? That is everything right there. Nothing else interesting to talk about as far as I can remember or think of. It was just a really good episode, and we're only at episode three. They're developing Kirby into a stronger warrior. There's still more powers to see. And this is a 100-episode show, and we're only at episode three, and it's really good. I cannot wait to tell you about episode four either. Episode four is really good, too. But that right there is the third episode of Kirby right back at you, and the third episode of the Kirby Dreamcast. At some point in the distant future, we will go over Kirby's first game, Kirby's Dreamland, and that is going to be uh, a total mess when it comes to the numbering of this, because we'll be the numbers of the Kirby right back at you and the show will be different at that point. But I can't wait to talk about the games, because my first game was Kirby's Dreamland way back in the day with the Game Boy, and I'm excited to talk about that, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And as always, if you got feedback for the show, things that you think would make it better, or just any ideas you got, let us know in the comments. That'll help us out. You can, of course, find us on YouTube and on Podbean with this. Podbean, if you just want to listen to the show, YouTube has some visual extras going on there that makes it a little more interesting as well. Just whoever you want to take the episode. I had fun talking. I hope you had fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time. <laughs>